He's still Greg Anderson, but this is actually KB Titan racing now. That's right. Last time we were here, Greg was honing my dad's other block. And dude, you put the 300 horsepower hone job on it. <laughs> it was insane. Well, I'd like to take the credit for all that 300, but I'm not thinking I had all of that. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think no. so either. No. But it has raised the question, from an engine that was only making 480 horsepower, and we did hone, rings, pistons, new cam, some springs, some lifters, a little bit of head porting, mm -hmm. and it picks it up 300, that's a <laughs> huge number. That's a big gain. But what happens if we just did the hone and the piston and the rings? Well, let's find out. We got Dad's other engine that was from the same era. And oddly enough, we actually dyno it the other day. Uh -huh. Here's the crazy thing. After sitting on the floor for almost 20 years, it made the exact same power number within <laughs> one horsepower <laughs> than what it did in 2004 here in 2023. I guess, you, I guess you gotta have a lot of faith in that dyno, don't you? That's wow. a pretty good dyno. I mean, that's crazy that two different dynos, two <laughs> different, different fuels, dino. different uh -huh. dynos, 20 years apart, two different fuels. It was just the luck of the day, right? <laughs> that we had this thing made 733 horsepower in 2004, and it made 733 horsepower just the other day. That's pretty cool. So, what we're gonna do now is kind of do the same thing we did before, just the same Hone, rings, piston combination we did on the other engine to this engine and see what happens. Okay. Key thing we did last time, went step by step. So first thing I saw you do was you put torque plate on it. Deck plate, gotta have a deck plate, gotta simulate a cylinder head on there. Does mm -hmm. it no good to hone a block without a cylinder head on it because it's completely different when you fold that head to it. The stretch of that bolt means everything. It folds those cylinder walls every different way. They're everywhere but round once you bolt the deck plate on there. So deck plate is simply simulating the cylinder head. And you had to torque that to 105 foot-pounds, right? 5 foot-pounds on, on a small block torque. So that's pretty impressive. That tells you right there the integrity of the block. Still good. And it's going to move it around quite a bit by yes. doing that. Yes, absolutely. If you measure that hole without a deck plate and you measure it after bolting the deck plate, you're going to see completely different readings on your, on your micrometer. Yep. Not only did you use the deck plate, I also saw you use the same assembly lube on the fasteners. You want to make sure to use the same assembly lube. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure to use the same torque pattern. Right. You want the same torque pattern, you're going to bolt that cylinder head on. If you don't, you're going to have a different shaped cylinder again. So all these little details are very important. Same head gasket too, by the way. Same head gasket. Correct. Have all that detail, as like I said, to get Everything that. matters. Yeah. yeah. We are trying to simulate a running engine as this engine is going to run. Right. Yep. Not doing is hot honing. We're not, and I yeah. don't have the capability to do that yet. Someday we may. It's uh, you know a lot of pluses and negatives. A lot of people live and die for it. A lot of people don't believe in it. So right. We're going to get to the bottom of that one of these days, but Absolutely. we haven't got there yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. So because the other engine was 4065 bore. This one's actually 4065 right now. Correct. So we're, all we're gonna do is try to go 1,000 over. We're gonna try. We'll see how straight this block is, how mm -hmm. hard your father was on it 20 years ago. Yeah. You told me it overheated a little bit, so we'll just see. We'll just see how crooked it is. But And there was a lot of rust in there too. Yes, we'll get rid of the rust, and if it's not yep. that crooked, we'll try to keep it less than 1,000. So if we end up at, at 4066, we're gonna mm -hmm. be happy. Okay, so the first step in the honing operation, what are we doing? We have to go over here and we have to find the number one cylinder. We find the number one cylinder, <laughs> we center with that because we want this machine to do what it does, which is the really cool part. It'll move hole to hole and you stand there and look like you're really important and you just watch the machine run. <laughs> it the does the work for you. Bottom line is, it's a CNC machine. You have to set it up first. You got to tell the machine what to do. So yeah. we've done that. We've identified number one and we, we, we think we've got the center of that. So now really all we got to do is hit the go button and we're going to see just how straight these cylinders are. So what abrasive are we starting with? So this is a 170 to 200 grit diamond. Okay. Okay, we're gonna start with that. And the reason we start with that, we try to get our RVK or our basically our mm -hmm. grooves. The valleys, yeah. A yep. little bit, our valleys, a little bit deeper than, you know, guys used to do in the old day. We wanna hold a little bit of oil in that cylinder because, you know, your rings these days are basically, the finish on the rings is so perfectly round and so hard, <laughs> that they're not really porous. Right. And they're not out of round, so the ring itself really doesn't hold the oil. Exactly. Which they used to do in, back in the day. Old rings did, and yeah, they exactly. don't, so now you have to count on your block kind of to hold some of the oil. So right. we have to do that with the hone on the block to hold a little bit of oil because that ring is not gonna hold the oil. So with this, you're basically gonna go to 
with we're gonna, in size, we're right? We're gonna go basically to finish size with this, and then we'll step to a CBN and we'll put a finish, flat toe finish on it with that. But yes, you're going to go basically until that cylinder is round as it can be, and whatever finish size you want, and that's it. And you push that number in there, it'll do every four the exact same size, size to the thousand. All right, let's get started. Okay. But there, there's that rust spot right there. <laughs> that's crazy. Isn't this thing amazing? It is amazing? So that's really the neat part of being able to use this new surface system to do this kind of work, because you can see exactly yeah. where you are. That's crazy. Okay, so we finished the roughing operation. You have to take out what, almost two thousandths, right? One thousand. One thousand to clean it up. One thousand to clean it up. And, and mainly because of the rust. The cylinder was actually straight within three tenths, but we, we wanted to get rid of that rust. So mm -hmm. whether it means anything or not, we don't like to see it. No, and that's the nice thing with the microscope. We can actually go we in there and check it. and see we and can see, see it. see everything. Yeah, we can see it all. Now, the other nice thing with the, with the surface system, we're able to measure in between, and you can see that trace. So right now, we have an RZ of 366. So talk about what RZ is and why it's so important. Well, you have to get your RZ deep enough or a big enough number, otherwise by the time you end up after your plateau, you will not have a deep enough RV. You want mm -hmm. your valleys to be deep enough. If you started your RZ, say in the low 100s, you would never get a deep enough RV by the time you end up with the, the final plateau hone. So you've got to start with a deep RZ. And it, it, it really, it's not a problem to start extra deep because you can always bring it down with your plateau with more strokes. Right. But if you don't start deep enough, you will never get where you want to be. You can't add to it, essentially. Can't add to it. No. no, so right now we're in an RVK of 80 with an RZ, that's peak to valley height, RZ is, uh, a 366. So now from here, we're gonna go to the 600 yeah. CBNs and how many strokes are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna start off with about 10 strokes at mm -hmm. light load, we'll back down the pressure. We usually run about 20 with our roughing load. We'll back down to 17 or 16% load, real load, because I, I particularly like to do more strokes at a lighter load than mm -hmm. less strokes at a heavier load. It's, it's easier to hit your target. And, and, and keep consistency from cylinder to cylinder that way. So that's the way I like to do it, and uh, we'll give it a whirl that way. And the key thing is you're counting strokes. You're not doing stock removal anymore. Correct. Correct. All right, let's do it. operation went through the plateau operation with 600 grit CBN and we checked all our finishes everything's spot on yeah actually looks really nice so all the rust cleaned up within a thousandths so now we're a 4066 bore all right so then we can go ahead and get with Brian at CP tell him what the new bore size is give him the cam card so he can get the cam because we want to try to maintain this was 14 to 1 compression 14 to 1 yeah the other one was 9 to 1 change. Oh, yeah. one was seven, 690 brand new and one was 730 <laughs> brand new. I guess that compression had, had a bit of a difference. We better there. hope she seals up then. Oh yeah, we gotta work on that. But you know, we're gonna do all the trick stuff. We're gonna have gas ported piston with gas ported rings. With Just, gas ported rings. Yeah, we're doubling up. We put nice. small gas ports in the piston, nice. small gas ports in the ring nice. to do a little double up you job. That 20 years ago. No, but it worked good in the last one. So we're gonna try it again on this one. Any parting words? Do we miss anything in this process? I don't think so. You know, it, it, it's what really has stuck out with me is is just like the last block you brought in here. You had told me your father had overheated at the mm -hmm. last race, right? So we expected to see you know big variance in the right. cylinder. We expected to have a fight with it. And, and honestly, whether we did or we didn't, this machine, this Rottler machine, made it look like the motor hardly ever been run. I mean, they you're right. Up within two, three tenths. So you know, I, I guess. There's no job too big for this machine, is what it comes down to. So, as I've said before, this machine has done so much for us here at KB Racing, and I'm proud to do a video like this with 
any type of block. It can save any type of block, any regardless of what kind of condition that it's been through and, and how bad it's been abused. It can bring it back, and, and it can bring it back in a minimum amount of, of honing. You, you don't plow through a block in, in, in a period of past period of time. So it prolongs the life, and it uh, brings it back to as good as new. So it's. Uh, I mean, that's the case of this block. I mean, this thing was yeah. crazy rusted. Yes. And we brought it in. Good as new. Yeah. Yeah, in less than a thou. Right. Yeah. Less than a thou. And it's yep. perfect now. Yep. Man, so That's thank amazing. you, man. I well, can't, I can't, I can't thank you enough. I'm so as you are, so this has been interesting to me, and, and, and it's not just the, the high dollar pro stock blocks that this machine is, is set up for and can right. save and save life on. Mm -hmm. It's really any block. So that's uh, that's quite a feat. Well, that's a huge value for why do you need a machine like this and tools like the profilometer and stuff? Yes. Is that it gives you the ability to know yes. and not have to waste time, exactly. blocks, material. To do it and you can get it right you can get it right quickly because we, we literally did this whole thing in what a couple hours yes. so the good news is again we're speechless on how incredible the machines and the tools allow us to be what's going to be fun to see is how much power it makes because last time it made especially 730 and you had a lot of fun on that last inch and you picked it up 300 horse right i don't think we're picking 300. up 300 <laughs> but well, let's see what we do pick up so you better stay tuned to the series and watch because when we come back we'll have the engine back on the dyno and running and we'll see how much we gained doing all this work